If you go shopping for network equipment today, you could wander the store shelves endlessly and never encounter any of the old-style Ethernet connectors, the round BNC coaxial type that we discussed in our Ethernet tutorial. Instead, nowadays you are much more likely to run into equipment like this that uses keyed rectangular connectors that look a lot like modular telephone jacks, only bigger. The industry evolved to that point through several evolutionary steps. During a transition period that lasted through several years, it became commonplace to find dual-mode equipment, like this. And that equipment had two different kinds of connectors, allowing you to mix and match the old-style coaxial segments with the new-style RJ45 connectors. Just one little point of interest here, RJ stands for Registered Jack. You could buy dual-mode Ethernet adapters for your PC, and you could also find networking equipment like this with dual connector types. You won't find that anymore, though. The new style cables and connector types are better and more convenient. They're less expensive and much easier to install, and they can carry the signals faster, giving you the ability to move your data faster and better on the network. And inserting a new Ethernet cable into one of these new modular connectors is literally a snap. But in order to bring all these new benefits to modern Ethernet, the technology had to evolve. Let's think back to our original Ethernet tutorial and the discussion we had about collision domains and segments. It may seem counterintuitive now, but it turns out that with this old original style Ethernet, the most complicated problem was detecting collisions. It was difficult for a station at the far end of a network cable to determine if another station way at the opposite end was interfering with its transmissions. In order to make this work, engineers chose a specialized coaxial cable of high quality, but even with that cable, the results were marginal, and they couldn't go any faster than about 10 million bits per second and still reliably detect those collisions. That's why the original popular Ethernet standard was limited to 10 million bits per second. Furthermore, this coaxial cable was rather expensive. It wasn't very flexible. It was awkward and cumbersome to string between many, many computers in a large building, and a single point of failure on a cable broke the whole network segment. A lot of people observed that Big office buildings were already wired with telephone wires, and there was a search for a way to use standard low-cost telephone wires with a high-speed Ethernet and somehow detect those collisions. For a while, the giant North American telecommunications company AT&T promoted a technology that they called Starlan. Starlan did use existing low-cost telephone cables and avoided the major expense of rewiring office buildings. The Starlan developers knew that the cheap existing telephone cable couldn't be used to reliably detect collisions, so they came up with an innovative new hardware architecture that handled each separate telephone line in point-to-point -point fashion so that there wouldn't be any collisions on that cheap telephone cable. All of those point-to-point -point telephone wire segments came together in a central location at a new box that they called a hub. Starlan was still Ethernet at its heart, and it still used a collision domain, but the hub condensed the collision segment down to just a few inches within a small box. In spite of its innovative architecture, Starlan just couldn't deliver speeds faster than 1 million bits per second because of the cheap old cables strung throughout our telephone system on which it was based. The major innovation of Starlan was to get the industry thinking about collapsing the size of those collision domains. Starlan was a commercial failure, so commercially at least they never quite met industry expectations. But engineers did find a way to adapt a higher quality wire that still looked like a telephone wire was still fairly inexpensive and they could tap it into an Ethernet segment. To do that, they invented what we call an adapting Ethernet hub that has an old-style connector on one side and a new style of connectors on the other side. It clipped into a coaxial segment like this. A few years ago, if you had purchased an Ethernet hub, it would have looked like this, with two different styles of Ethernet connectors, one with a collision domain on a coaxial cable, and others for these newer, higher speed cables that were more convenient and less expensive. This kind of configuration actually became quite popular with mixtures of the old style Ethernet, their old connectors, and the new style, where collisions could occur either out on the coaxial cable or on a small collision domain segment inside this little hub. Once these collision segments were reduced in size from several hundred feet down to just a few inches, engineers were able to detect and manage collisions even if the data rates were far greater. At that point, Ethernet speeds really took off, and we began to hear about 100 megabit per second fast Ethernet 
and later even gigabit Ethernet. Eventually, they started building these little hubs with clever circuits so that you could disconnect and remove the old style coax and the more modern connectors would still work and where all of the collisions were occurring within a single small little collision domain or Ethernet segment inside the box. Over a period of a few years, the coaxial cable style of Ethernet gradually disappeared and it became more and more commonplace to see these new kinds of networks where you just have an arrangement of new, more modern, less expensive Ethernet cable. You could think of these hub devices as just a short little collision domain with connectors, allowing a kind of a fan out. And you can learn a lot more about this kind of equipment elsewhere here at AskMrWizard.com. Dual mode hubs facilitated a gradual migration of connector types from the round BNC coaxial to the modern keyed square RJ45 twisted pair style. Of course, every kind of Ethernet compatible equipment had to make the same transitions during these same transition years. Desktop computers became equipped with dual mode or even triple mode Ethernet adapters. These are often called network interface cards, NIC, and sometimes the word is abbreviated as NIC. Here's an example of a network interface card that adapts one computer's Ethernet interface to any of three different connector styles. The D-shaped connector in the middle is an even older style that predates everything we've discussed. For most users today, you'll just identify the key rectangular connector using a twisted pair RJ45 cable that look, will look a lot like a fat telephone wire, and you'll just ignore the other connector types because they are relics of a bygone day. <laughs>